Hey guys, welcome to Off the Great Wall. It's Mike. Dan here. Dan, let me ask you a question here. Yeah. Do you believe in ghosts? Yeah, totally. Uh, here's what I think, though. I know there are a lot of stories of ghosts in the West. I mean, we all seen the Sixth Sense and things like that. But I contend that ghosts are way scarier in the East. I agree. I mean, paranormal activity was scary, but I think the Grudge was scarier. Can I just tell you that The Ring was yeah. the last horror movie I ever saw? I was on a day two when I saw that movie, and uh, a few times, yeah, I screamed like a little girl. <coughs> Not my finest hour, but after that, I kind of gave up on horror movies, because that was scary. And if you guys don't believe us that Asian ghosts are way scarier, keep watching this video of some of the scariest ghosts from Asia. The first one, Churl. Known elsewhere as a Chudail or Chudal, this is a ghost in the folklore of India, especially northern India, which is renowned for its ghostly screams. Usually taking the form of a woman, a churl is said to be created when a pregnant woman dies during the festival of Diwali, which is the Hindu festival of light. Some variations say it occurs when a woman dies during childbirth. Either way, they return to the land of the living as a vampire-like creature bent on revenge because of their bitterness due to their unborn child's death. Often found in the wilderness, a churl has feet which are flipped 180 degrees, allowing her to walk backwards while she mesmerizes the victim with her eyes. If her gaze is not shunned, usually through a cloth or blanket over one's own eyes, she will lead the victim to a secluded location and drain them of their blood. A churl's desired victim is often her own family, for she is angry and not being properly cared for during her pregnancy. If the body is buried with meticulous care and respect, the churl's bloodlust might also be satisfied. Number two, Ario. An Ario is a terrifying ghost which usually returns to the land of the living to right wrongs it experienced in past lives. Normally, they are women, although male Arios are not unheard of. Tormenting the former lovers and families brings the spirits great pleasure and they often drive the living to commit suicide. Onryo usually waits a few days, even a month in some cases, before starting their attack on their relatives because they want to see who is mournful and who isn't. Onryo are often created through some sort of trauma, like abuse from a husband, but their rage is usually non-specific, meaning they'll attack family members who had nothing to do with their deaths. Weird, huh? So they just kind of like kill whoever in their family to satisfy their bloodlust. Number three, Phi Tai Hongs. In Thailand, people who suffer excessively cruel deaths or were left unburied or without the proper funeral rites turn into ghosts known as Phi Tai Hongs. A pregnant woman is said to be the most powerful version of this ghost as she has the strength of two thanks to her unborn child. Places of extreme violence, such as a terrorist attack or natural disaster, is said to be strong breeding grounds for Fitai Hongs, as they often involve young people whose time hasn't come. Shrines are often built in these places as a way to persuade the ghosts to leave. Usually, the Fitai Hong stays near the place of its death, waiting for another living person to come by. If possible, the ghost will try and kill the unlucky mortal, hoping that they will take its place and free it from its spiritual bondage. You know what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life now? Which is? Be nice to pregnant women. Yeah, and uh, stay away from like natural disaster areas or something. <sighs> Number four, Funayure. The spirits of those who died at sea, the Funayure, are commonplace in Japanese folklore and their name literally translates as ship ghost. They are said to possess supernatural powers with the ability to make any number of ghostly ships appear. The Funayure then use those to lure the living captains of nearby boats to veer off course, normally to their deaths. Some versions have the Funayore being let aboard. Once aboard, the ghost will ask for a special tool called a Hisiyaku that is similar to a ladle. 
If the request is granted, the Funa Yurai will flip it over and water will begin magically flowing, ceasing only when the boat has taken on too much water. On smaller fishing boats, the Funa Yurai is said to actually use the tool to manually scoop ocean water until the boat sinks. It's like a slow death by ladle. Here's my question. Why would you want to ladle on a boat anyways? It's not like you could drink the seawater. No, they, you don't think they have barrels of other water that you need a ladle for? I wouldn't be that dumb idiot sailor to be like, yeah, give me a ladle. Oh, now we die. I would give him a ladle because I don't know what he wants. <laughs> See, a security goes, he wants a ladle, I'm giving him a ladle. Finally, Chinese water ghosts. I mean, I'm pretty much resigned to the fact that I won't just jump in and swim at any random bodies of water. I'll go swimming in a swimming pool where I can see the bottom. Thank you very much. I agree, especially swimming in the ocean. You don't know what's out there. It could be sharks, giant squids waiting to drag you under, uh, the kraken. Yeah, well here is something that may just be scarier than a shark or a giant squid. Chinese water ghosts, or Shrigui, are truly truly the terrifying monsters of the water. They are spirits of people who have drowned and they wait for humans to cross their particular body of water. Then they will drag the living beneath the surface and drown them, thus providing the ghost with a new body to inhabit. So basically the water ghost takes over your body and then lives your life. And that's not the end. If you are drowned by the water ghost, you become a water ghost and all that is on your mind is drowning the next person who unfortunately passes by the water where you lurk. So it's a never ending stream of water ghosts preying on other people, turning them into water ghosts. I'm gonna see where Chinese will be. Careful where you swim or else you might die and turn into me. So you could be actually, you could have been a water ghost who found Mike and now the real Mike could have been now a water ghost. Yeah, but I think I would know I'm a water ghost. <laughs> I keep my memory of being a water ghost. But let me ask you, which ghost do you want to run into the least? The least? Mm -hmm. um, I would say those like the preg those, uh, pregnant lady. Yeah, the pregnant ones. Cause like, I feel like they were just like, <gasps> like the ship ones. I'd be like, oh man, that's kind of cool. Why would like, that be cool? I mean, like, first of all, just because they sink your ship doesn't mean you die. That's true. Think about it, right? I just jump in the water and swim. But to what the if? Shore. Yeah. They're working together with the drowning ghosts. You're on a ship. Yeah. You gave a ladle to a ghost. Yeah. He sinks your ship. Now the water goes waiting for you. All right. Well, then I can't escape that because then the whole, I mean, like, that's basically like you're talking about just so many ghosts everywhere. I'm already dead. I'm dead. All right. Well, let us know which ghosts you find the most scary. And let us know if you think ghosts from Asian tales are scarier than those from Western legends. Yes. All right, guys. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram. Check out the Double Chin Show, all that good stuff. Thanks so much for watching. See you later. Peace.